My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel narrates one of three persons raised from the dead by our Lord. And it is quite interesting in today's gospel that our Lord said she is asleep, not dead. And the people knowing that she was dead, as it says, laughed him to scorn. How our Lord was humiliated, but it did not bother him. He had the people put out and raised her from the dead. But this gospel serves as a reminder to us of death. And it could be said that death is the most important moment of life, the last moment of our life. Because depending upon the state of our soul at that moment will determine our lot for all eternity. And that is why many of the saints had as their motto, memento mori, which means remember death that they would think about, they would remember death every day in order that they might prepare for that all-important moment. Now, in this regard, I would like to speak about this morning, particularly the topic of perfect contrition. And as this booklet describes it, perfect contrition, the golden key to paradise. Because perfect contrition is able to cleanse the soul of mortal sin, even outside sacramental confession. And so we all should know what perfect contrition is, how to make an act of perfect contrition, and we should do so every day. If we are in the habit of making the act of perfect contrition every day, then it will come to our mind, to our heart, to our lips, at the moment of death, very easily. How many souls are there right now, one wonders, in heaven who were saved because they made an act of perfect contrition before they died and were not able to see a priest? And by that act of perfect contrition, saved their immortal souls. So first of all, what is contrition? What do we mean by contrition? Contrition is sorrow for sin. And it is something that is based on a supernatural motive. Now, someone can have contrition that's natural contrition. For instance, a criminal regrets that he committed the crime because if he is caught and sentenced, he will spend time in prison. So he is sorry, not for a supernatural motive, but from a natural motive. Another example of a natural motive would be the contrition of Judas. Remember, after he betrayed our Lord, he went back, he took the money, and gave it back to the priests. And he said, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. So we must make certain that our contrition is true contrition, and that is that it is based on a supernatural motive. Also, it must be interior, not something we just say with our lips, but it comes from the heart. Furthermore, True contrition is universal, and that means it covers at least all mortal sins. One cannot say, I have true contrition for this mortal sin, but not for that mortal sin. That would not be true contrition. So true contrition, sorrow for all mortal sins, it's interior, it's based on a supernatural motive, a motive of faith, and it is one that detests sin, especially mortal sin above all other evil. Now that's any true contrition. But there are two kinds of true contrition. There is perfect and imperfect. And it is good to have both kinds of contrition. Sorrow for sin. Imperfect contrition is a sorrow for sin that is based on fear. And we say that in the act of contrition when we say, I'm heartily sorry for all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. That is imperfect contrition, good contrition, true contrition, but not perfect, because it is based on a motive of fear, fear of God's just punishments. But perfect contrition is based on love rather than fear. And we give expression to that motive, in the act of contrition when we go on to say, but most of all, 
because they offend thee, my God. So I'm sorry for all of my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. If we say the act of contrition devoutly, we think of the words, we mean them from our heart, then we are making an act of perfect contrition, as well as the imperfect contrition based on fear. So perfect contrition is based on love. And we know that love is the greatest of the virtues, charity. And we also know that love of God cannot coexist in a soul together with mortal sin. Perfect love drives out sin. And that's what perfect contrition is. It is an act of love of God driving out mortal sin, bringing back the state of sanctifying grace to the soul. Now, perfect contrition is based again on love, and it could be one of two kinds of love. One of a love of benevolence, and that is a love of God because he is so deserving of love, because he, he is so worthy of love and so good, infinite goodness. But also it could be a love of gratitude, and that is God has been so good to me, how could I be so ungrateful? as to offend him. Both kinds are based on love. And so let us strive to have the sorrow that includes both a fear of God's just punishments, but also a love for God. Now, many people will say, well, that's wonderful, but that must be very hard to come by. Must be very difficult. Must be very few acts of contrition that are perfect. Not so. It is not that difficult. If we say, for instance, the act of charity, and we truly mean it, we love God, then we are sorry for our sins because we love Almighty God. So we should not think that it's almost impossible to make an act of perfect contrition. Also, we should be in the habit, as I mentioned earlier, of saying it every day, of, of having making an act of perfect contrition every day. Because if we do so on a daily basis, it will easily come to our mind and heart, say, at the moment of death. Now, one cannot make an act of perfect contrition who has committed a mortal sin and then go to communion. So, someone who had committed a mortal sin is still obligated to confess that sin in a good confession before going to communion. But at least by that act of perfect contrition, the life of grace is restored to the soul. And it is necessary to confess it. That is a divine law. And also, true contrition includes the willingness to confess it. If one is unwilling to confess his sin, he could not have true contrition for it. That's part of contrition. And another part of contrition is the purpose of amendment. If one is truly sorry for his sin, then he is resolved not to commit that sin again. And so by making the act of perfect contrition, one is also determined to amend. So this is a wonderful practice, one that we should understand. There are some Catholics who are so misinformed that they think that a, an act of perfect contrition restores the life of grace to the soul only at the moment of death. It would do so any time the sinner makes an act of perfect contrition. So contrition is a wonderful thing. We see this in the example of St. Mary Magdalene, where our Lord said of her, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. She has loved much, which would indicate that her contrition was perfect contrition. And also, to the degree of our contrition, to that degree, the remains of sin are washed away, the temporal punishment due to sin. It reminds me of a wonderful story in the book called The Sinner's Return to God by Father Michael Mueller. And that is a book about confession. But in that book, he tells a story of a man who had committed perhaps multiple mortal sins. And by the grace of God, he conceived such a detestation for them, such a sorrow that he went to confession and confessed with a great deal of sorrow and tears of repentance. And then afterwards it was revealed to the priest 
that that man was not only forgiven his sins, but all the temporal punishment due to those sins was wiped away because his contrition was so great. Now, let us not think that we have to feel contrition in order to have it. Because contrition is in the will, not necessarily in the feelings. It may affect our feelings. We may even shed tears for our sins. But it is not essential for there to be true contrition, for there to be that feeling. So let us remember the value of contrition. Recite the act of contrition at least once every day. At the end of the day, before you retire, you make an examination of conscience. Say the act of contrition slowly, devoutly, and think of the words and mean them from your heart. And you are thereby making an act of perfect contrition every day. And if we are in the habit of doing so on a daily basis, it will be easy to do so at the end of our life, that all-important moment on which our entire eternity depends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.